Hawaii is a tropical paradise, a land blessed with spectacular beauty and the spirit of aloha. Dana Ireland was smart, fit, and full of life. She loved the big island of Hawaii. On Christmas Eve 1991, Dana's life was stolen. She was deliberately run over while riding her bicycle, sexually assaulted, dumped into the bushes, and left to die. A local man confessed to the murder and said two brothers helped him. The man recanted his confession, but no one believed him. He's like the start of boy who cried wolf. Once he started telling the truth, nobody gonna listen. Crime scene DNA did not match any of the three men, but all three were convicted anyway. It raises questions. Are the three convicted men innocent scapegoats? Why aren't the police pursuing the man who left his male DNA on Dana Ireland? Why was exonerating new DNA evidence locked up by court order and not given to the convicted men? The bloody t-shirt was not worn by any of the three defendants. In episode 10, we will discuss what this means. Primarily, the man who killed and raped Dana Ireland is still at large, free to kill again. Also, we'll see that Frank Pauline is murdered in prison in 2015, never able to use the 2007 DNA tests to clear his name. The purpose of a preamble is to identify the purposes and guiding principles of a document. The preamble to the United States Constitution begins with the words, we the people. The first purpose of the new government was to form a more perfect union. The second stated purpose was to establish justice. What does the word justice mean? In the context of criminal law, we probably all can agree that the word justice includes due process, the principle that the defendant was treated fairly. Justice also requires that a conviction be a correct decision based upon true evidence. You probably remember in grade school saying the Pledge of Allegiance. It ends with the words, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our country's dedication to justice is stated not only in the preamble to the Constitution, but also in our Pledge of Allegiance. Liberty and justice for all. The 1979 movie, And Justice for All, is a courtroom drama film directed by Norman Jewison and starring Al Pacino, Jack Warden, and John Forsyth. Pacino plays a Baltimore public defender, Arthur Kirkland, defending a corrupt judge charged with a brutal crime. It's a great movie. We recommend it. It contains a good description of justice. Attorney Kirkland asks the jury, what is justice? What is the intention of justice? What is justice? What is the intention of justice? The intention of justice is to see that the guilty people are proven guilty and that the innocent are freed. Yes, we agree. There are two sides to justice. On one side, it is about guilty people being proven guilty and on the other side, it is about innocent people being freed. 20 years ago in 2000, it certainly looked like Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, and Sean Schweitzer were guilty as charged. But in 2007, the prosecutor and Hawaii Innocence Project knew, or should have known, the bloody blue t-shirt 
did not belong to Frank Pauline. Today, in 2020, all three convictions still stand. In a 2018 court pleading, Dr. David Hamer, a DNA expert, confirms the DNA profiles from the vaginal swabs, the gurney exam sheet, and the bloody Jimmy Z t-shirt can be identified as coming from one single male. The three convicted men, Frank Pauline, Albert Ian Schweitzer, and Sean Schweitzer, are all three excluded from being the male who left his sperm and t-shirt at the crime. In episode 9, we explained our analysis based upon the December 21, 2007 Reliagene report summaries and the 1999 Lisa Calandro testing results. Column 3 is a partial profile of the man who wore the t-shirt. Column 4 is the profile of the sperm donor. It looks like they are a match. We know from the 1999 report that the column four profile did not match Frank Pauline or either Schweitzer brother. In 2007, the prosecutor knew, or should have known, that the Reliagene tests of the blue t-shirt established the t-shirt did not belong to Frank Pauline or either Schweitzer brother. One might reasonably ask, why in the year 2020 do all three convictions stand? Based on Sean Schweitzer's confession identifying Frank Pauline as the perpetrator of Dana Ireland's sexual assault, the prosecution questioned the result of the 1999 DNA test results by stating in their press release they were going to ask the forensic scientists to reevaluate the integrity of the DNA testing results. We now know the 1999 DNA test results, which excluded Pauline and the Schweitzer brothers, were rock solid accurate. In suggesting the 1999 DNA tests may have been invalid, the prosecution was incorrect. On May 9, 2000, after Sean Schweitzer was sentenced, Prosecutor Lincoln Ishida told the assembled reporters that he thought the 1999 DNA testing, which excluded Frank Pauline and the Schweitzer brothers as sperm donors, gave a false reading. The prosecutor said that he believed Frank Pauline left the semen DNA. We now know the prosecutor's opinions that the DNA belonged to Frank Pauline and that the 1999 DNA test gave a false reading were both incorrect. In both the Pauline and Schweitzer trials, the prosecutor had embraced the DNA technology and lay testimony that had identified Dana Ireland's blood as being on Frank Pauline's t-shirt. It was Dana Ireland's blood on the t-shirt all right, but it was not Frank Pauline's t-shirt. The prosecutor was incorrect. In both the Pauline and Schweitzer trials, Charla Figueroa was a powerful witness. At the time of the 1991 murder, Charla Figueroa was Frank Pauline's live-in girlfriend. She had washed his clothes. She testified in both trials when she saw the bloody t-shirt on television, she was in shock because it looked like Frank's t-shirt and he was a suspect in the murder of Dana Ireland. I was in shock. And why were you in shock? Because that's the first time I found out that he was a suspect for this case. In both trials, in addition to Charlotte Figueroa, Two more witnesses testified the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt belonged to Frank Pauline. Witness Stephen Deering was quite sure that the bloody t-shirt was the same shirt as the shirt he had seen Frank Pauline wear. Witness Lynn Matthews also testified 
the Jimmy Z t-shirt belonged to Frank Pauline. We now know it was not Frank Pauline's t-shirt. Charlotte Figueroa, Stephen Deering, and Lynn Matthews were incorrect. Early on, the Ireland family had offered a $25,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of Dana Ireland's killers. In 2000, after the convictions of the three defendants, the $25,000 reward money was divided up and given to witnesses whose testimony helped convict Pauline and Schweitzer. Judges for Justice is informed that six witnesses received reward money. Judges for Justice believes they included the t-shirt witnesses, Stephen Deering, Lynn Matthews, and Sharla Figueroa. In a 2004 interview with a and &E, the jury forewoman in the Frank Pauline trial, Lisa Kaneshiro, discussed the evidence. The first thing she mentions is the bloody t-shirt. All the really compelling evidence like the bloody t-shirt, the Volkswagen that was repainted, the testimony of Frank Pauline himself, Lieutenant Guillermo's testimony, all these people, all these pieces of evidence together finally overpowered any indecision we might have about the DNA. According to the book Murder in Paradise, after the verdict, the forewoman, Lisa Kaneshiro, talked about the jury deliberations. On page 304, it notes the jury had agreed quickly that the t-shirt found near Dana Ireland's dying body belonged to Frank Pauline. We now know the t-shirt did not belong to Frank Pauline. On that point, the jury was incorrect. On December 26, 2002, in an unanimous decision, the Supreme Court of Hawaii denied Frank Pauline's appeal and affirmed the jury verdict. In their decision, the court conceded there were defects in procedural safeguards, but there was overwhelming evidence that pointed to Frank Pauline's guilt. The court stated, at the scene where Ireland's body was found was a t-shirt soaked with Ireland's blood, which was subsequently identified as belonging to Pauline. We now know that the t-shirt soaked in Dana Ireland's blood did not belong to Frank Pauline. On that point, the Hawaii Supreme Court was incorrect. On page 3 of the April 2000 press release, the prosecution announced that Sean Schweitzer had passed a lie detector test in support of his confession. It was repeated in the press that Sean Schweitzer had passed a lie detector test that showed his brother and Frank Pauline were the attackers of Dana Ireland. This information generated a high degree of confidence in the belief that his confession was true. It put the capper on the case. Albert Ian Schweitzer and Frank Pauline murdered and raped Dana Ireland. In a 2011 interview, newspaper reporter Rod Thompson. The police took a taped confession from him with a polygraph, which indicated that he was telling the truth. But what if Sean Schweitzer did not pass the polygraph? Judges for Justice believes that Sean Schweitzer did not pass the polygraph. He actually failed it. In an upcoming episode, we will talk about noble cause corruption and the evidence we have that indicates Sean Schweitzer did not pass the polygraph. For the moment, consider a June 2016 letter 
from Albert Ian Schweitzer's Post-Conviction Attorneys, Hawaii Innocence Project, to the Hawaii County Police Chief, Harry Kubujiri. Polygraph examiners report one of three conclusions. The subject was truthful, inconclusive, or deceptive. Toward the bottom of the letter, it is noted the polygraph examiner for Sean Schweitzer told the Hawaii Innocence Project that the result was deception indicated. This is a copy of the court minutes list from a 2007 court ordered sealed file in the Hilo Third Circuit Courthouse. It contains post-conviction DNA testing. We believe this file contains exonerating DNA testing. That is, it shows, we believe, that the bloody t-shirt did not belong to Frank Pauline. If so, it shows that the decisive evidence against Frank Pauline was false. By court order, this evidence was sealed, secreted, and hidden from Frank Pauline. Why would the court, the prosecutor, and Hawaii Innocence Project want to keep this exonerating evidence from Frank Pauline? We don't know. In episode 9, we discussed one of the reports we believe the file contains a Reliagene Lab DNA testing report of the blue Jimmy Z t-shirt. It was sent to Hawaii County's prosecutor Charlene Iboshi and the Hawaii Innocence Project, Virginia Hench, on December 21, 2007. In December 2007, the prosecutor and Hawaii Innocence Project knew, or should have known, that the blue t-shirt did not belong to Frank Pauline. The United States Supreme Court has held that our Constitution's Due Process Clause requires the prosecutor to turn over all exonerating evidence to a defendant, including new evidence after conviction. In addition, Judges for Justice believes that the prosecutor and Hawaii Innocence Project had a moral duty to turn the evidence over to Frank Pauline, but this never happened. On April 27, 2015, it was announced on Hawaii News that convicted murderer Frank Pauline Jr. had been murdered in a state of New Mexico prison. It's one of the state's most notorious and heinous crimes. A young woman brutally raped and murdered on the Big Island. And now, just as we're learning the case is being revisited, one of the men convicted of the crime is killed in prison today. Frank Pauline Jr. was serving two consecutive life terms for the death of 23-year-old Dana Ireland. 24 years ago. She was run over while bicycling in the Big Island's remote Puna district on Christmas Eve. She was raped, beaten, and died on Christmas morning. On May 19, 2015, it was announced by New Mexico authorities that another inmate, Daniel Thomas Hood, had confessed to murdering Frank Pauline. Hood stated he decided to kill Pauline after an altercation with Pauline a couple of months earlier. Hood also stated he thought Pauline was a snitch and acted like he owned the place. A convicted murderer in New Mexico has confessed to killing Hawaii inmate Frank Pauline Jr. Pauline was killed on April 27th at the Southern New Mexico Correctional Facility. He was serving time for the rape and murder of Dana Ireland on the Big Island in 1991. Prison officials say Daniel Hood, who was already serving time for first and second degree murder, admitted that he killed Pauline by hitting him with a rock. 
Daniel Thomas Hood officially became a serial killer when Frank Pauline became his third victim. In 1996, 15-year-old Daniel Hood murdered 81-year-old Grace Christensen and 51-year-old Bruce Johnson in a Minnesota cornfield. Since 1996, when he recanted his confession, Frank Pauline always maintained that he and the Schweitzer brothers were innocent. Frank Pauline testifying at his 1999 trial. I don't care if anybody believes me. That you are a murderer. I don't care if anybody believes me. The main thing is I speak in the truth. That's all I care about. The Relia gene exonerating DNA test results were never produced to Frank Pauline. The DNA testing evidence remains locked up in the Hilo courthouse to this day. It is the opinion of Judges for Justice that if the 2007 DNA testing of the t-shirt had been provided to Frank Pauline, a competent criminal defense attorney would have secured him and Albert Ian Schweitzer a new trial as early as 2008. Tragically, the evidence was hidden from Frank Pauline. He was denied the opportunity to use the exonerating DNA tests to clear his name. But it gets worse. The failure to provide Frank Pauline this evidence also may have cost him his life. Arguably, he shouldn't have been in prison in 2015 when he was murdered. In the prosecutor's April 2000 press release, law enforcement promised to continue to investigate the crime to find what they called a fourth perpetrator. This did not happen. Instead, the police closed the case. The effect of that decision? A killer remained at large and no one was looking for him. Webster's Dictionary defines the word iniquity as gross injustice. There are a series of injustices in this case. Dana Ireland's murder, the wrongful convictions of three innocent men. Police stopped trying to find the man who left his male DNA at the crime. They closed the case. Authorities sealed and hid from Frank Pauline exonerating new DNA evidence. Frank Pauline should not have been in prison in 2015 to be murdered. The killer of Dana Ireland remains at large. He walks the land free to kill again. This is gross injustice. This is iniquity. This is Hawaii iniquity. What is justice? What is the intention of justice? The intention of justice is to see that the guilty people are proven guilty and that the innocent are freed. What we have is the opposite of justice, a brutal crime where three innocent men were found guilty. But the guilty man remains free. Few in Hawaii, including law enforcement, seem to care. This ends episode 10. In episode 11, we are going to show you who we think killed Dana Ireland. The evidence and FBI profiling tell us a lot about this man. What he looked like, the motor vehicle he drove, that he knew Dana Ireland, he had been watching her.